Hey, welcome back to the Like-Minded Opinion Podcast. I hope that your week has been really well, and I hope that if you're listening to this on the weekend, that your weekend is going great, and that uh, life, the world, haven't uh, come down on you too hard. Pakistan, they launches a, another strike uh, in Iran, because Iran have been, it, it's an ongoing thing, tit for tat and it is escalating and the language is being more stronger uh, war is mentioned uh, more often in the rhetoric and um, so yeah so killing seven people so I'll just uh, read a little bit here uh, Pakistan's Air Force launched re- retaliatory airstrikes early uh, Thursday in Iran allegedly targeting militant hideouts, uh, an attack that killed at least seven people and further raised tensions between the neighboring nations. Uh, so it goes on to say that uh, they said that two children was killed in, in the uh, southwestern province. The strikes is hindering diplomatic relations between the two neighbors. Uh, as Iran, as you know, uh, as Iran don't have nuclear well that's as far as we know <laughs> iran don't have nuclear weapons but uh, pakistan does and they've always been suspicious of each other uh on the border especially on the border of iran and iraq uh, pakistan they're saying that uh it's only going to cause more problems with the the war in the middle east because iran is uh, supporting the Houthis, and Iran is supporting Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, and uh, so if it's going to go to war, then I guess it's just going to go to war with everybody. Uh, back to up in Canada, the government of Canada announced uh, funding for black communities only in British Columbia. So the headline is, I guess, uh, for black people, uh, migrants, they're going to get funding. And uh, let's just see a little bit what it says there. With Canada's population becoming increasingly diverse, it is essential that we strengthen our commitment to fostering a diverse and inclusive society and provide support to organizations that are dedicated to driving positive change in communities across the country. This is coming from the Canadian government website. Um, today, the Honorable Kamel Korea, uh, Minister of Diversity, in Inclusion, and Persons with Disabilities, announced that nearly 370000 has been uh, awarded to support uh, in equity-deserving Black-led, Black-focused organizations in British Again. Columbia uh, and gay fever in Switzerland in 2021 they had 26 cases and now they have 261 and Switzerland well it's not individual countries no more it's the who you know it's the WEF but the who is saying that uh, we should be gearing up for what they call virus X or disease X. And um, it's no doubt about it. It seems that the media, the mainstream media is pushing. It seems every country now as something as, I mean, throughout history, I'm sure every country had one or two cases of something or, you know, uh, again, Switzerland um, announced that its poverty level is pretty bad. Uh, They said that uh, the poverty level, so how I understand the the article, is you need $4,650 U.S. dollars a month to be at the poverty level. And apparently, uh, 16.8% of Europe, that's what the article said, of Europe falls within that poverty standard. In 2021, it's even worse now. So uh, 
that is a dire situation when you have to have that much money just to be poor. Wow. Uh, I feel for everybody. I, I know, you know, we, we all have to deal with this prices going up. Everything costs more money. You get less service for more money. And uh, it's ridiculous. You can't turn the TV on without being bombarded with this stuff. And it makes me suspicious because now with, with the uh, pandemic and COVID, now I'm kind of thinking when you see all the after the fact, all the evidence coming out, uh, I mean, I've lost the little bit of trust that I've had with organization, government organizations. I'm not saying I'm anti-government. I'm just saying that I have lost a lot of trust in what they say. Uh, Swiss. Parliament said that they're going to come out now and join some of the other countries that calls Hamas a terrorist group. Okay, well, in Canada, again, uh, this was in the Alberta news, but they're, they're saying that uh, in Canada, one in five restaurants, they said that one in five uh, is going to be going out of business. When they have to pay back this uh, Serb, you know, money that the government during the pandemic uh, they told businesses you got to shut down you can't stay open and the businesses was like well we don't have the money to do that we you know go bankrupt and they said well we uh, we'll give you a interest-free loan and set a date for when you would start be paying this back but you only have to pay back uh a certain percentage of the whole. So say you got $60,000, uh, then you'd pay back uh, 40000 or something like that, interest-free. So what's happening is now that that's coming due, they, they don't have the money because they've lost the business during the pandemic and it just haven't come back in a lot of situations. So they just don't have the money. So they're going to have to go bankrupt. And uh, I mean, that's, that's going to be a hard hit for the economy. One in five restaurants. There's a lot of restaurants across this country. So uh, that's not going to be good. Quebec Premier, staying in Canada, why not? We're here. Uh, Quebec Premier asked the PM, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, uh, to stop the influx of immigration because they are at their breaking point. Now, Quebec was, you know, bringing in the immigrants, right? So just like everybody else, they have no choice for the most, well, for the most part, for the full part. <laughs> the government's telling them, you got to, you know, we're sending the immigrants to you. So they're at the point now where they don't have the money to support them. They don't have the resources to, uh, you know, to educate them necessarily. So th they're saying they're at the breaking point. Um, you know, increase in violence and stuff like that. Uh, whether that's linked up to that or not, it's not the case. It's the point is that they're running out of money, out of funds, so they need to stop it. But uh, I don't think it's met with open ears. Uh, on December 20th, if you, you probably know, um, in Canada alone, there's a lot of churches that have um, been burned down by arson. And uh, some, some say it's 76, some say it's 70. Uh, but uh, whatever the case may be, uh, whatever the true facts are, let's just say it was some other religion, say uh, Jews or uh, Muslims or something like that, a mosque or synagogues. It would be called... Um, epidemic almost right they would be saying oh there's a problem there's hate crimes there's stuff going on here and they'd be looking into it but uh, now that particular church on december the 20th that was burned down uh that was a seventh day adventist now this year i found interesting so 
Uh, I forget where it was. There's a Christian scholar that works in a Bible college. <laughs> so I guess he was on X and he tweeted or X'd <laughs> um, a comment that said that he thinks that churches are accepting homosexuality and uh, too easily. Uh, that, that was all. That's all he said. It was just the churches should be not just accepting it as easily as what they are. So what happened? Well, he got canceled. <laughs> he got fired, actually. Uh, the college said that he was bringing um, controversy to the college, to the Bible college. And uh, so they fired him. So he's suing him, and um, it, it does look like maybe he's going to get his job back. But my point for bringing that up is why? Uh, why is it that you can't give an opinion? I mean, I, I don't think that you should be an idiot. I don't think you should get on here and say, uh, on any platform, and say, oh, kill that one. Kill that. that, that, that. You know what? You deserve to go to prison um, for that if you really mean it uh, and stating that on a platform. But I, I'm saying uh, to get on and say, I, you know, like, I don't want, I don't think that churches should be accepting homosexuality if you believe the Bible or whatnot. I mean, if a, if a church comes out and says that they don't accept homosexuality, I mean, they are excused upon crucified. But it's well known that um, Islam, for instance, you know, they they don't look favorably upon a practicing homosexual. Uh, but nothing, there's no groups advocating on behalf of the homosexuality that's, uh, you know, being unaccepted into the, the mosque. Now, uh, YouTube is going to start censoring uh, very soon, going to start censoring uh, people who speak negative uh, against abortion. So what they're going to use as a guideline is the WHO, or okay, the uh, World Health Organization's uh, guidelines, what they have written up regarding abortion, okay? They uh, are following that guideline written up by the WHO. So if you are anti-abortion, uh, your videos will not be uh, viewed, I guess. They're going to be censored and warnings and so on. I'm, I'm not sure, they weren't sure exactly how it's going to go, but they are going to be uh, censoring it. So I'm guessing it's just going to be outright, just blocked, deleted. Um, so I agree that a lot of things on YouTube, if you add a free-for-all, there could be some real problems. But I do believe that it should be uh, free speech. Not free hate, not free, but a free opinion. Now, anybody getting on spreading hate of any kind should be banned. But also, there shouldn't be enough guidelines that will cut off uh, competition of thought. Meaning, if, if you're pro-abortion and this guy over here is not, they should be able to civilly talk and have videos and talk it out. I, If I want to listen to this guy, I'll listen to this guy. If I want to listen to this guy, I can listen to that guy and draw my own conclusion and make a decision. So, and that should be on everything, not just abortion. That should be on across the board. Um, but when you get into censoring opinions, but uh, you, it should be free speech. Uh, Canada, Canada's capital, which is Ottawa, has come out and said that they have a 
There's an article that was saying that they now are housing and opioid addiction is epidemic. And lastly, uh, the WHO is saying that uh, we should be, the world should be preparing for disease X. What's disease X? I have no idea. They don't say. They just says disease X. Uh, like I read there, you know, Switzerland and uh, parts of Canada got different diseases. They get one or two cases and, and it seems that's what they're going to go with. But uh, what this disease X is, I don't know. Do they know? I don't know. How do they know that there's a one coming? Uh, that would be my question. I don't even know if I'm going to get the flu. Um, even if I'm around people with the flu, I, I have no idea that I'm going to get the flu. Only when I get it, do I know that I got the flu. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I guess you can predict certain things, uh, but that don't mean that everything is, it, my opinion is just, you know, don't go pushing fear onto people when there's no reason. And uh, we, we know that there's a problem soon enough. And uh, rather than telling people to gear up for a disease that uh, has not even existed yet, there's no evidence of it. We, we have nothing out there yet. But yet you're telling people we should prepare. That's just constantly letting people never get a break you're, you're, you know, you're always causing anxiety and depression. Anyway, folks, I hope that uh, something in this uh, sparked a little interest. And thank you so much for uh, joining me on the podcast. And uh, it is new and I'm new at this. So, but uh, hopefully you can support by subscribing. Uh, 